So now I'm recording, but I haven't shared the screen with you guys yet. So. So when we're dealing with complex numbers, we we've learned that that um i squared equals negative one right so based on that knowledge we can kind of figure out what every power of i equals um so i like to think of it in terms of if I have I, well, I just equals I, right? So that's I to the first power equals I. We know that I squared equals negative one, right? We know about those two pieces of information. So in that respect, I cubed equals negative one times I, which is just negative I. If we look at i to the fourth power, well, if i cubed equals negative i, we have negative i times i, which is negative i squared, but i squared is just negative one, so it's negative times negative one, which just equals one, right? And if we look at this, I to the fifth, we get one times I, which just equals I again. I to the sixth is now I, sorry, but I squared, I to the sixth. There's a reason I put I squared. It, I to the fifth is I, so I to the sixth is I times I, which is I squared which is negative one. And you start to notice a pattern. I to the seventh, well, that would be I to the sixth, which is negative one, times I, which is negative I. I to the eighth equals negative I times I, which is just negative one, negative times I squared, which is negative one, which is just one. And you'll start to notice that a pattern builds. Every four match, right? I to the first is the same as I to the fifth. I to the sixth is the same as I squared, uh, sorry, I squared is the same as I to the sixth. I to the third is the same as I to the seventh. I to the fourth, same as I to the eighth. And that is going to follow suit with the ninth is going to be the same as I to the first. The tenth is going to be the same as I squared. And so you can find absolutely the power of absolutely any I by dividing by four, right? So if I have, say, I to the 27th power, and I wanna know what it equals, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go 27 divided by four. Well, let's see, four goes into 27, the closest one I can get is, is 24, so that's, six times four equals 24. And I wind up with a remainder of three. So if I have a remainder of three, I know that I to the 27th equals the same as I to the third, which is negative I. Does that make sense? So I can do this with any number. I just make them up. Um, 129, right? 
I'm going to divide it by four. So I want to know what is I to the 129th power. I'm going to go, okay, four doesn't go into one, but it does go into 12 three times, right? Four times three is 12. And I get zero and I'm going to bring down the nine. Four goes into nine two times, right? Two times four is eight. And what I'm left with is one, right? So I know that I to the 20, 129th power is just going to be I, right? Because I only have a remainder of one. So we're looking at it in terms of what is our remainder. If our remainder is one, it's I. If our remainder is two, it's negative one. If our remainder is three, it's negative I. And if it divides evenly, so there is no remainder, right? So I to the 12th power, four goes into 12 evenly, it would just be one, right? So that's what we're looking at in terms of these. It's, it, we're looking at the remainder. So when we divide by four, if you divide by four, right? Remainder. Ooh. Pen throws. If the remainder equals one, then you have I. Right. It'll equal I. If the remainder equals two, you get negative I. And if the remainder equals three, you get negative one. Right? If there's no remainder, right? So if remainder equals zero, no remainder, right? It divides evenly. What do you get? Just one. Right? And so we can do this with absolutely any power of I. All I have to do is divide whatever the power is by four, and whatever my remainder is, is going to be our, our, our solution. Right? So that is this box right here is the most important. Part of what we're talking about today, right? So if I have I to the 237, I don't know what that is. I just made it up. All I have to do is go 237 divided by four. And I'll go, okay, well, four goes into 24. We know six times. So we're going to put up here five because that's 25 times four is 20. And I'm going to subtract, I get three, seven. Four goes into 37 nine times, right? Nine times four is 36. And I'm left with one. So I know that I to the 237 equals I, right? Here's the best thing. If I ever decide to test you on something like this, right? All you have to do is have this little chart with you that says, oh, you know, whatever we get is what we get, right? Um, whatever my, all I have to care about is my remainder. If I don't have a remainder, I want to know what I to the 24th power is, right? Well, I know that 24 divided by four is six. That's an even number. There is no remainder. It divides evenly. And so I would just get one. Right. In the same respect, I to the 12th power would equal one. I to the 36th power would equal one. Right. Because four divides evenly into it. Um, I to the power of five would give me a remainder of one. So that would equal I. Does that make some sense to you guys? Are you feeling it? Are there any questions where that is concerned? Shoot.
Yes, it should. I have two and three mixed up, don't I? This should be negative I. This should be negative one. Right? Yeah. I mixed up my two and three. Thank you. So it is this corrected chart that you need, not uh, not not the one I had initially. And two is actually fairly easy to remember because you know that I squared is negative one, right? So anything you add four to on that, so the six would be negative one, the tenth would be negative one, the fourteenth power would be negative one, the eighteenth power. Notice I'm just adding four to each of those numbers. Um, all of those would be negative one. So it's a fairly simple concept, right? Um, and one that was never told to me before. And I remember taking a test one year and it was one of those, uh, those like big tests that you pay for if, if you want to teach. Um, and one of the questions in it, and I had never seen this formula before, um, was like, what was I to the 11,027 power? I'm like, how the heck should I know? And there's no way I can count all those out, like multiply them out. I didn't know this before. And then one year and I was already teaching and I started writing them down. And, um, and I'm like, oh, we, there's got to be a formula for this. I thought that would make my life had made my life so much easier to know that at the time, but but I did not. I'm gonna stop this video because it's getting too long and I've already 